Hey everybody, I'm going to be making a uh, t quick tutorial video. Well, I don't know how quick it's going to be. I've got one step left here on my uh, Blood Angels Chaplain, and that's because I want to do some, that last step is going to be doing some blending here on the shoulder pads. So I figured I'd make a, a quick tutorial video, kind of slash review video. And what we're going to be doing with the wet blending, instead of doing a normal wet, wet blending, I'm going to be using a drying retarder on the wet blend. And the reason for that is because it's just simply easier if you're new to wet blending, using a dry and retarder really, really helps uh, you learn the technique because you'll have a lot more work time and a lot more uh, just ability to get the blend perfect uh, before the paint dries. So I've got two products here I've tried and one is the Reaper Master Series Drying Retarder and the other one is the Vallejo Slow Dry. While these two products perform identically, they are not identical. Uh, the Vallejo is actually a gel. Let me show you this show you this gel here. It actually comes out nice and gloppy. It's a gel. It doesn't run. Oops, no runs, no drips, no errors. Let me be fussing with the camera controls while I'm doing this. I'm going to turn off the automatic focus for a second. So, anyway. The, the result is the gel uh, really, really thickens up your paint. So it requires a lot of thinning, a lot of extra thinning to get uh, the paint where you need it to be using the Vallejo slow dry. So I try to actually try to avoid the slow dry. On the other hand, the Reaper is exactly the opposite. It's extremely runny and it actually thins your paints out more than water or, or flow aid would. Um, I don't know how that's possible, but it actually does it from from what I can tell. It says shake well. I don't know if that's just a generic label. It's shake well. I've got a mixer in it as a lot of Reaper stuff does. So I'm going to be doing some uh, blending here on the shoulder pads. I'm going to be on manual focus for most of this, so. Uh, Forgive me, forgive the framing. Uh, so I'm gonna do is uh, a blend. I've do, I usually do this in just normal layers, but I'm gonna try to blend this time because it is an HQ, and I'm trying to spend a little more time on it. Um, so we got blood red. Of course, you're gonna have to translate these to the new colors. Should uh, you want to try this with the new color range? Um, you're doing non-citadel paints. The Vallejo bloody red, as I've said before, is not anywhere close to an exact match for the blood red even though they say it is. Um, the bloody red is a lot more pink. Then we got blazing orange and fiery orange. I still got a little bit of fiery orange left because it was out of production even before the paint switch over. So I'm trying to clean that gel out, which is not that easy to do on this palette. So the first step is we're going to be mixing up some paints and some slow dry. Not some slow dry, I mean, don't want to use the slow dry, the uh, drying retarder from Reaper. And what will happen is both of these things will give you a good, oh yeah, and I also recommend multiple brushes because there's no way you have time to clean the brushes off. Uh, I'm going to mix up quite a bit of paint and make sure I have lots to work with. I'm going to use just a drop of this Reaper and I'll show you how, how bad it really thins this stuff out. Okay, it's a single tiny drop. And, uh, really makes the paint thin. So hopefully this paint won't dry for quite some time. I'm going to get some blazing orange. Put a bit of that in here. So I'd rather have more paint, I'd rather waste paint than have it dry on me while I'm trying to finish up the blend. Okay. Okay. A good mix. Lastly, fiery orange. Unlike the other ones, I don't want to waste a lot of the stuff because I don't have a lot left. Okay. And then, of course, just a drop of the slow dry. Okay. Okay. 
So when doing wet blending, I do recommend having multiple brushes handy. And the reason for that is uh, you don't have to worry about cleaning the paints with uh, so I got my Winsor Newton's uh, Zero, my Winsor Newton's Triple Zero, and a Citadel detail brush. So I'm going to start with some blood red. Here, it's time to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put some blood red on about where we want to have it on the model. Now you don't have a lot of working time with this, but you do have some. That will probably be good for now. I'm going to take the other brush. I'm going to put the blazing orange on right underneath. And then we're going to take, let's take this brush here, and we're just going to blend the two together into a smooth transition. Got a little more blood red here to the top. And then we have some fiery orange along the bottom. These things are not drying on me, so I have plenty of work time. Blazing orange just doesn't seem to be as pigmented as the other colors, so I'm going to have to add a little more blazing orange to the mix. Is that one for? Okay, and then so we'll take the brush and we'll do the actual blending again. It's right here between the two colors, just kind of give it a swirl. And it'll give it a nice transition. Between the colors, Let's see if I can get. As I said, it's still shiny because, of course, it is in fact still wet. It's going to be wet for a while. This will probably give you a good, at least five minutes of extra work time, which may not seem like a lot, but when you're doing small areas like this, it goes really quick. I mean, it's plenty of extra, extra dry time. Blazing orange just does not have the strong of pigment as the other colors. I'm trying to focus back on so I don't. So it might go in and out, but at least you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. And actually, you can see it's starting to dry a little bit here. I'm getting some extra blazing orange on here. Fortunately, though, it's still plenty wet on the palette. There we go, and there's a much better transition. So all you do is you put the layers down, and then you just kind of blend them, kind of swirl them together. Uh, let me get the other side here. Uh, so the main use, reason for using the drying retarder is, of course, is just simply because it's easier to do the wet blending with it. Crap. on here on my gold. I'm going to have to go back over that. So anyway, where was I? Blazing orange. You can see it because the arms are in the way. Just put the stripes, just put the paint where you want it, and then literally just kind of mix the two together in the, in the border area. That's really all you need to do. It goes really quick. Okay, let's finish this off with the fiery orange. Too much. There you go. So here's what we have. It's actually starting to dry quite nicely on the model. It's not drying on the palette at all. At all. Ah, in fact, they might even be starting to separate a little bit. But that gives you Nice little wet blend. It's going to take some cleaning up to do, I see. Because I'm having a hard time working around the weapon.
you can see that I still didn't get a very good blend here between the fiery orange and the blazing orange. So I'm just going to do it again. Oh, that's much better. Much better. And of course, as you get better and better at this at this wet blending stuff, it will need less and less of the sl slow dry. But with you learning the technique, it's an absolute brilliant way uh, to get the job done and and learn what you're doing. Keep working it until you get a blend that you're happy with, pretty much. I uh, see that's much better. Let it focus. And that's about it. Um, using the slow dry, I would definitely recommend getting the Reaper Master Series over the Vallejo slow dry, um, unless you really like uh, messing with your mixes. Because if you add this to the paint here, let's just clean off my brushes real quick and then let's go ahead and just add the slow dry to the paint to see what it does. So I can tell you what I mean. My brushes off here, at least roughly. I still got to do the other shoulder pad, but I don't have to worry about those paints getting dry anytime soon. In my experience, the the Vallejo stuff will be dry, will be at least somewhat wet for a day on the palette, and this one will stay dry for at least you know 15, 20 minutes, or stay wet. I mean, on the palette about 15, 20 minutes. So anyway, let's grab some paint. Not the fiery orange. Whoops. Some, some bloody red. I'm gonna show you what I mean that happens when you try and use the the uh, slow dry on paint. Put some paint here on the palette. Now we're gonna add in a touch of the Reaper or the model color slow dry. Let's mix it. And now what we've got here, instead of a paint, is we've got a paste. See how these other colors are running down? This one stays in place. So I guess if that's what you're looking for, so if you need a little bit thicker than you get from the Reaper for some particular technique, which I don't know, it's possible, um, this might be a better alternative. Or of course you can just, I mean, it's literally like a gel. It's really thickened up the paint. Or you can just thin it out normally with flow aid or probably not flow aid, but at least water to get it to where you need it to be. So that's the difference between the Reaper slow dry uh, drying retarder, uh, the Vallejo slow dry, and the basics on how to wet blend. See, it's already getting pretty dry here on the model. So I'm very, I think, I think it's got some nice transitions on it. So that's going to end this video, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later.